Hi, this is Larry Mantle. Join me in our Film Week Critics March 3rd at the Orpheum Theater in downtown L.A. for our annual Film Week Academy Awards preview. Tickets available now at LAist.com slash events. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report. California enters the legal fray over whether to allow two giant supermarket chains to merge, saying the deal could raise the price you pay for food. The state Senate tackles legislation designed to combat fentanyl trafficking without tampering with a landmark law that lowered drug penalties. Anyone that says that they have an easy fix on this issue, candidly, they're selling snake oil. And LAist Civics Tuesday introduces you to a candidate for Superior Court judge with a background that's not what you usually see for that job. Good morning. It's Tuesday, February 27th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the L.A. Report from L.A.S. 89.3. California has joined the federal government and six other states in suing to stop the merger of Albertsons and Kroger. The former runs Vons, Pavilions, Safeway, and Albertsons stores here. The latter owns Ralph's and Food for Less. The suit filed by the Federal Trade Commission claims the merger would eliminate competition, lead to higher prices, and undercut employee bargaining power. Mayor Karen Bass and members of the Los Angeles City Council conclude their two-day trip to Sacramento today. They are at the Capitol asking for more resources to address costly problems such as homelessness. Today, Bass is expected to focus on obtaining more funding for housing and expedited reimbursements for past emergencies such as the pandemic and recent storm damage. The leader of the California Senate is endorsing a package of bills targeting retail theft, fentanyl, and other crimes. Senate President Pro Tem Mike McGuire says he believes all those things can be addressed without changing Proposition 47. That's the law approved by voters in 2014 that raised the threshold for felony theft and drug possession charges. Anyone that says that they have an easy fix on this issue, candidly, they're selling snake oil. Several bills in the package would increase access to drug treatment. Others aim to crack down on online marketplaces where many stolen goods are resold. Many California Democrats are reluctant, though, to raise criminal penalties, citing the war on drugs, which disproportionately impacted communities of color in the 1990s. Over the past 25 years, Los Angeles County voters have elected just two Superior Court judges who came from the Public Defender's Office. Historically, voters have leaned toward electing candidates to the bench who have experience as prosecutors. Some governors, including Gavin Newsom and Jerry Brown, have made it a point to appoint defense lawyers to judicial seats, but they're still outnumbered by former prosecutors. Superior Court Judge candidate Erica Wiley is one of several public defenders on the March ballot. She says she sometimes sees judges be overly punitive, especially when it comes to clients living with mental illness. I think that electing judges with the willingness to apply the law as it currently stands, which allows us to help people, that we'll see a turning point, and I'm hoping I can be a part of that. You can read more about Wiley and other Superior Court candidates in our Voter Game Plan Guide online at laist.com slash vote. A federal judge in Los Angeles says a former FBI informant charged with fabricating a multi-million dollar bribery scheme involving President Biden's family must remain behind bars while he awaits trial. The judge's order reverses a different judge's earlier ruling releasing Alexander Smirnoff with electronic GPS monitoring. Prosecutors said he's a flight risk. Smirnoff is charged with falsely telling his FBI handler that executives from the Ukrainian energy company Burisma had paid President Biden and his son Hunter $5 million each around the year 2015. Spurnoff has pleaded not guilty to the charges. Coming up, results are in from the latest count of an iconic California species. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge. Back now to the LA Report. 
Wildlife biologists are expressing concern about the continuing decline of the western monarch butterfly. A report from the Xerces Society for Invertebrate Conservation reveals that their population, based on a recent volunteer count, was about a third less than the year before. It's at around 233,000 butterflies. Climate change, pesticides, and a loss in habitat play a role in their numbers dwindling. Biologist Isis Howard with the Xerces Society says anybody can help the migrating monarchs make a comeback. A few different ways that people can help out include planting native milkweeds, additionally planting native nectar plants for the adult butterflies that migrate hundreds to thousands of miles. If you plan on planting milkweed, check out websites such as CalFlora and CalScape to better understand which native milkweed plants grow in your region. And avoid the tropical variety that does not die back in the summer as it can be harmful to the caterpillars. Yesterday's light showers are over, but don't put away the umbrella just yet. Another storm system is coming our way for the weekend. Forecasters say this storm is coming from the Gulf of Alaska and is expected to move into the area Friday evening, bringing colder temperatures and lower elevation snow. The storm has less moisture, so we won't see extreme high rainfall totals. Forecasters expect up to an inch and a half across the area through Sunday morning, with the highest amounts in the mountains and foothills. Elevations above 7,000 feet could see up to two feet of snow. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at LAist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the LA Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. <laughs>